Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to make a powerful cinematic 3D image of a logo, word, or design. I provided a PSD file for you to download so you can follow along. Its link is located in the video description or project files. It includes two files, a stone wall and bare metal. Before we start, you should check your 3D preference settings. To do this, go to Edit, Preferences, and 3D. The Ray Tracer threshold determines the quality of the rendering. The higher the threshold is, the less noise you'll have in your final image, but the longer it'll take to render it. I generally keep it either 4 or 5. For slower computers, you may want to use an even lower setting. VRAM is the video card's memory. The amount I'm allowing Photoshop to use is not necessarily what you should use because your computer may have its own requirements. Open your horizontal type tool and choose a heavy font. I'm using Arial Black. I'll start with the size of 105 points, sharp, and center alignment. It can be any color. Click on your document and type out your text. For this example, I'll create a logo from a simple type design. I'll increase the size of the X by highlighting it and dragging the T icon to the right. To lower the X, I'll go to Window and Character. The Character panel will open. Sliding the Baseline Shift icon to the right or left slides the character up or down. I'd like to move the word Films closer to the X, so I'll click between them and hold down Alt or Option as I press the left arrow key. I'll repeat these steps to bring Media closer to the X. To reposition your line of text, open your Move tool and move it. We can close the character panel now. Open your rectangular marquee tool and drag a rectangular selection over your text. Go to the large T icon and hold down Control Alt on Windows or Command Option on a Mac as you click on it. This adds a selection of the shape of your text to the rectangular selection that we just made. We can trash the text now since we don't need it anymore. Click the New Layer icon to make a new layer. We'll fill the selection with white since it's the easiest to see. If your foreground and background colors aren't black and white, press D on your keyboard. Since white is the background color, press Control or Command plus Delete. To deselect it, press Control or Command D. Drag a rectangular selection over the top. The bottom of the selection should be slightly overlapping the top of the large character. Hold down your Shift key as you drag another rectangle over the side. The left side of this selection should be slightly overlapping the last character. Continue to hold down Shift as you drag another selection over the bottom that slightly overlaps the bottom of your large character and repeat this on the left side as well. Continue to hold down Shift as you carefully add a selection that slightly overlaps the top of your smaller text and the left side of the large character. Repeat this on the bottom left, the bottom right, and the top right. When you're done, press the Delete key to delete the areas outside your logo. To deselect it, press Control or Command D. We're ready to enter the 3D mode. If you find that you're unable to access the 3D feature, it may be due to one or more of the reasons I listed in the video description. Make the Stonewall layer active and shift-click on the bare metal layer to make it active as well. Go to 3D, New Mesh from Layer, and Postcard. If you see this warning, click Yes. We're now in the 3D workspace. I won't be going over all the details here about 3D since I already did an in-depth tutorial. If you'd like to watch that video first, I provided its link in this video's description. Open the Layers panel. 
Notice both textures have a cube icon at their corners to let us know that they're in the 3D mode. We're going to make the bare metal texture into a new 3D material and then wrap our logo with it. To do this, click its thumbnail to make the layer active and open the 3D panel. Click the Whole Seams icon and click Bare Metal. In the Properties panel under Materials, click the icon next to the ball, click the gear icon and click New Material. When you see this window, click OK to save it. Scroll down to see that Bare Metal is now a new material preset. Before we can wrap our logo with this material, we need to make the logo go into a 3D mode. Open the Layers panel and make Layer 1 active. This is our logo layer. Go to 3D and New 3D Extrusion from Selected Layer. Click the Front Inflation Material to make it active and shift-click on the back inflation material to highlight all the layers between it and the top active layer. Open the material presets and double-click the bare metal icon. This will wrap this texture around our entire logo. Double-click the extrusion and I'll make the reflection 35. You can always change it later. Click the meshes filter and reduce the depth of the extrusion to 2 inches. Again, you can change it later if you like. Click the coordinates icon and in the x-axis of the rotation field type in 90 degrees and then press enter or return. Go to the secondary view window and before you click the icon at the top right corner to swap the main view with the secondary view Make sure the top view is checked. Then click the swap icon. Go to 3D and move object to ground plane. Now the logo is sitting directly on the background and its shadow moved closer to it. Open the layers panel and shift click on the stone wall thumbnail. Now both layers are active. Go to 3D and merge 3D layers. This connects the logo and the stone wall in 3D space. Open the 3D panel and click the whole scene filter icon again. Click environment and uncheck IBL which are image based lights. If your image goes black it means you have no other lights chosen yet. Click the light bulb icon which is the lights filter. Click the small light bulb icon at the bottom of the panel, which will open a choice of three types of lights you can use to illuminate your image. Point, Spot, or Infinite. You can add as many lights as you like from these three choices. For this example, I'll choose Infinite Light. The light widget has a handle that you can rotate to adjust the angle of the light source. To soften the shadow, Increase the softness to an amount you like. You can always change it later. I'll make mine 30%. I'll also increase the intensity to 150%. Click the whole scene icon and click current view. Click the rotate icon and rotate your image to an angle you like. Click the drag icon and drag your image so your logo is more to the center. Click the slide icon and drag it down to slide it forward in space. Continue until you're happy with its angle, size, and position. Keep in mind, the more it's angled, the more of the background will be cut off. However, we'll fill in those empty areas in a minute. I'd like to adjust the angle of the shadow. So, I'll click on the lights filter icon and rotate the widget's handle. To get a preview of the final image, click the Render icon and Photoshop will start rendering the 3D image. If you decide you want to stop the render so you can go back to adjust your 3D image, just press the Escape key on your keyboard. 
Remember, the amount of time Photoshop takes to render it depends on many factors, such as the computer's video card, the amount of RAM it has, and the processing speed. It could take anywhere from a few minutes to many hours. Once you have your finished 3D image fully rendered, you may have an empty area that you want to fill in. We first need to make a composite snapshot of your fully rendered image. Open your Layers panel and press Ctrl Shift Alt E on Windows or Command Shift Option E on a Mac. Open your Polygonal Lasso tool and draw a shape around the area you want to fill in. When you see a small circle, it means your work path is closed and you can release your mouse or pen. Go to Edit and Fill. Choose Content Aware and click OK. Then deselect it. If you want to retouch a spot, open your Patch tool, draw over the spot, move your tool over a clean area and release, then deselect it. To brighten your image, press Ctrl Shift L or Command Shift L to invoke Autotone. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.